What's the word today? Couple more minutes, just for us. Did I notice your time? Couple housekeeping notes. I'm traveling uh, Friday through Tuesday, uh, taking Julia up to see some schools in Boston. <laughs> College tour thing. <laughs> so we're gonna visit, um, and these could be honestly only exploratory because she's only seen schools in Florida so far. So just to give her a sense of what else is out there. We're going to visit Tufts and Northeastern and DC. And then I think we're going to, we're not doing an official campus tour of BU, but a drive-by. Um, and then my best friend from college is in Newton. So that's right outside of, right there in Boston. So it's combined then to be with her uh, first night of Passover's Monday night. So she's she always does a big seder. So then it times well with that. But also Edie, her profession is college advising. So she's Julia's college advisor. And uh, hi, okay. Um, yeah, it's kind of nice. I'm being told repeatedly, mom, you're not doing this. You're not involved. Well, I'm involved, but not here. So, um, but yeah, so to do these tours with Edie, is amazing because then she'll direct Julia so for future visits then have sort of a clear idea. Rose was actually asked when we were in Scotland in June. She said, I, th I think I'd like to visit Edinburgh University out like on an official tour. So that would be exciting. Yeah. Uh, my husband's from Scotland. So yeah. So um but a couple of housekeeping notes I uh, I have Sue subbing for Monday morning class. Right now, because uh, Jen, Jennifer Red doesn't know her schedule until really like the Friday before. So she's gonna see if she can sub this class on next Tuesday. And then I'll be back. So then, and then it's the last two weeks for yoga and meditation. So for the summer schedule starting in May, hello. Um, the yoga and meditation class on Wednesdays will drop off. Um, but Mondays and Tuesdays will continue. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So last two weeks for yoga and meditation, but I'll I'll weave in some meditation in the other classes. <laughs> All right. Everybody have a couple of blocks.
Hello, hello. I'm glad you could join us. All right, we ready to move? Yeah? Oh. <laughs> uh, nothing better than starting the day with yoga, I think. All right, let's start in hero's pose. So grab your two blocks. Be supported in this. So stack your blocks just like that. And then um, you'll bring them in between your inside ankle bones so that your sits bones will come in contact equally with the block. And you sit kind of forward on it so that you can feel your pelvis tilting a little bit forward, not creating too much of an arch, but then really lengthen down through the low back. So you feel your sit bones, you're really rooting down into the block and establish your seat, your support, so that you can then feel your spine lengthen up out through the crown of the head. I was just saying, Leo, if you're fine how you were, you're welcome to stay like that. So I want to open the practice. I thought it would be good to do a little bit of a balance theme today. So starting with some pranayama, some breathing techniques where it's equal breath. It's called square breathing. And we'll inhale to four. And then hold, we'll retain the breath at the top for four. Exhale for four. And then hold the breath at the bottom of the exhale for four. And then inhale. And you can almost picture tracing the edges of a box. Yeah, yeah, with your mind as we do the breath, as we do the breathing. And you can then close the eyes or soften them. Try and really feel like your sits bones are equal, balanced. And then I like to bring one hand over my heart, one hand to my low belly for this to feel the low belly pressing against the hand. And then when we retain the breath at the top to feel that connection with the upper hand. But if you prefer to have the hands on your sides, whichever suits you, <coughs> then go ahead and empty the breath all the way out. And then inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, Three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, 
three, four, hold, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. One more round on the other. And also to hold at the bottom, just release any control that is lost. Return to your natural breath and just make some observances. <clears throat> Some observations to this space and notice if the mind was able to stay focused on the breath or if it got distracted at any point. Balance is not just a physical element in our poses. Balance has to do with our mind equally as much and has to do with our focus both mentally and physically, as to what the gaze is resting on. So using breath work, intention, and method, letting go of perfection, standing in your strength, lifting your heart, all things that we can focus on when it comes to balance. Letting your intuition and your authenticity guide you. Think of phrases that come to your mind as you're trying to balance physically and mentally. In the Yoga Sutras ancient text, Sthira Suttam Asanam, Sthira meaning strength, Suttam means happiness and asana refers to the physical poses. All poses have a balance to them, even if we're not attempting to stand on one leg. All poses have a point of grounding, which part of your body is in contact with the earth. And with each pose, drawing a sense of strength or steadiness, manifesting it somewhere, the sutra teaches us that while we're focused on the steadiness, that we also want to feel some sort of pleasure. So just noticing right now any maybe equanimity that you feel after doing that modality of the balanced pranayama. And then bring your fingers to your hands together in Anjali Mudra and drawing from our intuition, let's bring our thumbs up to that space between the eyebrows, our third eye, our source of intuition. And what comes to mind as it relates to balance? Where in your life would you like more balance and set that as your intention this morning for your practice, let that be your guide. Seeking that balance between strength and pleasure. And keeping our fingers here, our third eye, let's open with the sound of Om. Take an inhale and empty the breath all the way. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. May the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. With the corners of your mouth slightly up, silently thank 
the other yogis in the room or my friends in the car. Eyes open, rock forward. Let's come to table top and let's warm up the body here with some cow and cat. So, doing a little balance and sequence here, already finding balance here in the alignment of toes, knees under hips, wrists stacking with elbows and knees. And then draw the belly in, draw the navel in toward the spine. Do you feel engagement and feel a neutral state of the spine? And then on your next inhale, start to rock that pelvis. So your tailbone lifts up to the sky, lengthen through the spine, open across the heart. And then on your exhale, rock the pelvis the other way, tucking the tailbone under, rounding the spine, open across the upper back. And then move at your own pace. But as we talked about yesterday, I was reminded over the weekend, the real work comes in the exhale. So make your exhale a little bit longer than your inhale. Maybe add a count. Inhale to four. Exhale to six. Inhale to four. Exhale to six. Just move, allow your breath to move you into each pose. One more inhale and exhale. And then after cat. Come back to a neutral spine, extend your right leg and then lift that right leg, hip height, level out your sacrum, flex your right foot and push through the heel, inhale, left arm, reach to that final ear, final balance. So find steadiness here. If the back is arching, draw the navel in, engage, inhale, lengthen, exhale, bring elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, elbow to knee. One more time, lengthen it out. Drop your left hand down. Cross your right leg behind you, bringing your toe down to the floor. Hollow out in your chest so your shoulders stay squared forward. And now start to turn the head to look over that left shoulder, maybe catching a glimpse of your big toe and stretching this beautiful right side of your body. Breathe in, breathe out. Nice job, everyone. Really feel the opening, the breath interacting with your intercostal muscles, the opening those spaces. Definitely have gotten some little clog from sleeping. One more breath in and out and then inhale that leg over to the right, dropping the foot down to the floor. Right edge of your foot parallel with the wall. Draw the belly in. If you lost that engagement, inhale, right arm up. Lifting the fingertips straight up to the ceiling. Rooting down through that right foot to notice where your body's in contact with the earth. Another breath in. And exhale that right hand down. Bring that right knee in. And then we're going to thread the needle. Take that right arm under the left. Take the right side of your face down to the mat. That right shoulder surrendering into the earth. Left hand can stay right where it is, or maybe find where you walk that right, that left hand out to the top of your mat, fully extending the arm. See how that feels for the area of the armpit, the left shoulder. We're not going to take the bind here. We're just going to enjoy this full extension of the arm. 
and the melting of that shoulder into the mat. One more breath in. And then exhale, left hand in close by the face. Bring that right hand back to tabletop. And let's inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. Come back to neutral. Extending left leg back, toes on the floor. Lift that left leg up. So left foot stays flexed. Press through the heel, lift that right arm up, finding stability here. Lengthen, draw the belly in. The next exhale, we bring elbow to meet the knee. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen, drop right hand down, cross that left leg behind you. Toes dropping to the floor, draw the belly in, hollow out in the chest, and then look over your right shoulder, stretching this left side of the body. Really feeling the length from your hip flexor, up each rib cage. One more breath in. And out. And then inhale that left leg, swing it out to the left, dropping the foot down, root through that foot. Inhale, left arm reaches up. Again, noticing where your body is in contact with the earth. Opening across the chest. Breathe in. And exhale that left hand down, bring the left knee in back to tabletop, and then thread that left arm under the right, dropping the left shoulder down, left side of the face, and then when you're ready, slide that right arm up to top of your mat, getting a full extension in this arm and opening in the armpit. Noticing if this side feels different than the other side. Another full breath in. And out, slide that right hand in by the face, press into it, bring your left hand back to tabletop, and then bring your blocks right in front of your hand from the lowest height and bring your hands up onto the blocks and then push back to child's pose. Slide the blocks back toward you so that your hands, you're sitting back, feet to heels, and then allow your hands and your wrists to rest on the blocks. So your arms are fully extended out in front of you. Bring them out, yep, and then you're letting the head drop in between the arms and just getting a little extra stretch here for the upper back. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more breath in and out. And then inhale, rocking up. So your hands are on the blocks coming to tabletop and then bring the blocks to the middle height. Extend your right leg back. Draw that right knee into your chest. Hug it in, hug it in, hover the foot and bring that foot in between your blocks. Come up on your fingertips and deepen into that right knee stretching our hips. Good morning, hips. <laughs> Good morning, psoas muscles. Left side. Breathe in. Breathe out. Finding that balance between steady and sweet here. And then shift your hips. 
bring the blocks under your shoulders. We did this yesterday. <clears throat> Half Hanumanasana, flip your right toes up, right heel resting on the mat. Come up nice and tall. So really get upright here, shoulder stacking with hips. Flex your right foot, drop back. And then hinge forward to deepen the stretch. Breathe in. Breathe out. Equal breath. Try and match your inhales with your exhale. <laughs> and then inhale to lift up. Rock onto that right foot. Bring those blocks forward. Tuck your left toes under. Lift up to low lunge. Inhale, right arm lifts up. Finding our twist here in low lunge. Where can you work here? Can you maybe bend the right knee a little deeper, sink down, maybe strengthen or lengthen that left leg, feeling balanced as you are on the ball of that left foot, rooting down to the sole of the right foot. And then exhale, right hand down. Step that left foot forward to meet the right. Inhale, lift up halfway, finding a flat back. And exhale, forward fold, bend the knees, take that right leg back, and then drop the knee. Uncurl the toe, and we sink into this left knee. Yeah, you can bring hands to that left thigh if you want. Exploring the sensations here on the side. Breathe in, breathe out, feel that sternum, the heart lifting up, and then we'll shift our hips, take the blocks under the shoulders, setting up for a half split on this side. So flip those left toes up, drop the heel down, find upright first where you're stacking shoulders and hips, and then add the hinge forward. Or not, you might not hinge at all. You might just get a big enough stretch by flexing that left foot. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. See if you can try and reach the crown of the head toward the mirror to help lengthen through the spine. Inhale to lift up. And rock on to that left foot. Bring the blocks to frame the left foot as you tuck the right toes under. Lifting up to low lunge. Right hand stays on the block. Lift that left arm up. And work here. Maybe, again, deepen into that left knee. Draw hips toward midline. Really feel steady here. Balancing on the ball of your right foot, getting a good stretch for that right foot, that right ankle. Try and lengthen through the right leg a little bit more. And then exhale, left hand down, push off that right foot. Inhale, lift up halfway. And exhale, forward fold. Reverse swan dive, sweep the arms out around and overhead. Palms come together, draw down your attention to your heart space. Find Tadasana, Mountain Pose, and take a few breaths to really find your alignment in Mountain Pose. So look down, make sure the outside edges of your feet are aligned. Find some symmetry down the center line. Balance between your two sides. And then on your next inhale, float the arms overhead. And exhale, swan diving into forward fold. Moving through our sun salutation. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, bend your knees. Plant your hands on the block or the mat. And take your right leg back. Low lunge. Next inhale, take your left leg back to find plank. Then drop your knees, and we're going to lower knees, chest, chin. Hug the elbows in, 
Lowering the chin and chest, gaze looks up, your sit bones are sticking up. Inhale, slide forward, coming onto the belly. Setting up for cobra, next inhale, lifting up into cobra, and exhale, lower down. Tuck the toes under, push your feet back to your heels, lift your hips, finding downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale, left leg lifts up. Draw your left knee into your chest and try and step that left foot forward in between your hands. And then next inhale, we're going to step that right foot forward to meet the left. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Reverse swan dive. Inhale, sweeping the arms overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Mountain pose. Other side. Inhale, arms sweep around. And exhale, swan dive into forward fold. Inhale, lift up to halfway. Exhale, bend the knees. Take the left leg back, finding low lunge. And then take the right leg back to find plank. Inhale, and then on your exhale, Inhale, lower knees, chest and chin. Inhale, slide forward onto the belly. Exhale, the breath out as you position yourself for cobra. Next, inhale, lifting up into cobra. And exhale, lower down, tucking toes under. Push your feet to your heels. Lift the hips, downward facing dog. Full breath in and out. Inhale, right leg up, three-legged dog. Hug that right knee into your chest and step that foot forward, finding low lunge, and then push off, step the left foot forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms, reverse swan dive all the way overhead, bringing the hands to the heart center and finding Tadasana Mountain Pose. Find your balance here. Find equanimity as you feel the prana moving in your body. Full breath in. Moving into warrior one now. So bend the knees a little bit. Step your right leg back to high lunge and then drop that heel down. Spiral it down. Hips are still facing forward. And when you're feeling balanced, arms reach up by the ear to sign warrior one. So in warrior one, beautiful. That left knee, your bended knee, tracking with the second toe. Keep and press into the outer edge of that back foot to take a little peek off the left side. Shoulders softening away from the ears. Maybe turn your pinky fingers in toward each other so that you get that external rotation. One more breath in and then exhale, hands down to the mat. Step the left leg back, finding plank, lower knees, and then either chest and chin like we did before or hugging the knees in and lowering the upper body down to the mat. Exhale the breath out. Next, inhale, lift into cobra. And exhale, lower down. Tuck the toes under. Push your feet to your heels. Straighten the legs, downward facing dog. Full breath in. And out. Look between your hands and either Walk your feet up to the top or a light hop forward. Inhale, half lift. 
exhale, fold, reverse swan dive to lift all the way up to stand. Hand to heart center, mountain pose, Tadasana. So other side, bend the knees, step in your left foot back, finding high lunge, spiral that left heel down. If your left hip is drawing back, draw it forward. You might need to widen the space in between your feet a little bit. Bend your left knee. arms come up by the ears. If you feel a big arch in the back, you can really lengthen down the low back. Right knee tracking with the second toe. Feel the strength in your gaze. One more breath in and then exhale, hands down to the mat, stepping that right leg back, dropping knees, knees, chest, chin, or lowering the full upper body. Exhaling the breath out, inhale into cobra. And exhale, lower down, tuck your toes under, and then we lift up into the downward facing dog. Full breath in and out, and then either hopping forward or walk the feet up. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms around overhead. Hands coming to heart center, Tadasana. And just taking a breath here. Inhale and exhale. And now we're gonna add on. So inhale, exhale into forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the hands, and step back to plank. Lift your hips up, downward facing dog. Inhale, the left leg up. Hug that knee into your chest. Hover here for a moment, rocking the body forward, and then drop your foot down right behind your feet. Spiral that right heel down. We're going to lift up to warrior one. So maybe Superman arms to get your foot in, and then float up. Or if you're just ready to sweep the arms up, warrior one. So we were just here. Notice the familiarity. One more breath in, and then we're going to exhale, opening to warrior two. So you're going to have to adjust that back foot bringing it more in line with the front foot. Hips opening to the exit wall now. Bring your hands to your hips and really notice if they're facing this exit wall. And when you feel steady, close the arms back up by the ears, turn your gaze to look out over the left fingertip. So sometimes that equanimity can come in with the gaze. Left knee should be tracking with the second toe. Tuck into the outer edge of your right foot to take a little heat off that left side. Beautiful shoulders moving away from the ears and lengthen out through the fingertips. Nice adjustment. And then let's drop, let's move in a peaceful warrior. So drop your right hand down, flip your left palm up and take that left arm, reach it up to the sky. Maybe sliding that right hand down the right leg a little bit and now straighten your left leg. Coming into the full expression of this pose, really feeling, breathe into that whole left side.
one more breath in and then exhale back into warrior two. Four breaths. Next exhale, we're gonna spiral down, pivot that back foot, the left leg back, lower knees, chest and chin or the whole upper body. <clears throat> Coming on to the belly, adjusting for cobra. So on your next inhale, lifting up into cobra. And then exhale, lower down, tuck your toes under, push your feet to your heels, finding downward facing dog. Take a full breath here before we take on the other side. Next inhale, we lift our right leg up. Hug that right knee into the chest, rocking the body forward, hover for a breath, and then drop that right foot behind the right hand, the hand. Spiral your left heel down. So first pose is warrior one. So sometimes it helps to sweep the arms back. And then inhale, lifting up to warrior one. Make adjustments. So right now in Warrior One, you're standing on two planks of wood. So you feel balanced in your footing. Beautiful, everyone. Make sure that right knee is tracking forward. And then we're going to transition into Warrior Two. So on your exhale, Open the hips to the TV wall. Adjust that back foot so now it's like you're standing on one plank of wood. So making sure that that back foot, the arch is in line with the heel. And then the right knee now, you don't want it to bow in. Energetically draw it toward the pinky side of that toe, of that foot. Lengthen through the low back, soften shoulders away from ears, gaze is strong out over the right fingertip, and then peaceful warrior, drop left hand down, flip your right palm up, and reach those right fingers up to the sky, straighten that right leg. Beautiful expression of joy, compassion, and love in this pose. Returning to warrior two. Spiral the hands down, pivoting that back foot. Step your right foot back, finding plank and lower knee. Chest and chin or the upper body down. Transitioning into Cobra, inhaling, lifting the heart, and exhale, lower down, tuck the toes under, push your feet to your heels, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lift your gaze, look between your hands, either a light hop forward or walk the feet up. And inhale, lifting up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Reverse swan dive, sweeping the arms around overhead. Palms come to heart center, bringing your intention into the forefront of your mind. Honoring that direction you set for yourself and we find Tadasana. And then bring your blocks and put them in front of your mat so that if you're leaning forward, they're at the highest height under your shoulders. So you can see how I'm in a high and my blocks are right under my shoulders. So we're going to do a little standing sequence where we come back up, come back up for a minute. So we're going to start in warrior one. <clears throat> With our hips squared forward, we're gonna float then into warrior three, and then with control, back to warrior one, inhaling into warrior three, 
and exhale into warrior one. Does that make sense? So starting in Tadasana, finding, make sure your outside edges of the feet are parallel. Connect with your center line. Bring your hands to your hips, soft bend of the knees, bring that right foot back, and then spiral the heel down to find our warrior one. Inhale the arms up. Make any micro adjustments. So your gaze looking straight ahead. On your next inhale, reach the arms forward. Planting the hands, lift that right leg up, toes pointing to the earth. Exhale, mindfully drop your right foot down and inhale into warrior one. So let's start with an extra breath in between poses and then maybe get to the point where we're moving with each breath. So exhale the breath back. Inhale, reach the hands forward, lifting the right leg up, three legs first, warrior three, and exhale the breath up. Next inhale, mindfully drop that right foot down and float the arms up, warrior one, and exhale the breath up. Inhale into warrior three. And see if you can speed it up now. Exhale into warrior one. Inhale into warrior three. And exhale into warrior one. So one more round. Try and level your hips. Try When you lift to warrior three, try not to have that right hip lifting up. So balance it out, yep. And then mindfully moving into warrior one. Nice job, everyone. Stay in warrior one. And let's come into humble warrior now. Interlace fingers behind the back. Knuckles drawing toward the earth. Or they can be on your sacrum. And then bowing the heart forward. Inhale to lift back up to warrior one. And then hands to hip, step that right foot forward. And instead of shaking it up, just stand in it. <coughs> Any mountain pose be your reason. Hands soften the knees a little bit. Just step that left foot back. So finding high lunge, legs are on two different planks of wood, spiral that left heel down, warrior one. Shaking a little bit, preparing for the flow, inhale, and then exhale, hands to the blocks, float that left leg up. We want to keep the hips level, adjust the blocks as you need to for this side. And then rebend, drop that left foot down, inhale, arms up by the ears, and exhale. Next inhale, warrior three. Exhale the breath out. Next inhale, warrior one. Exhale the breath out. Next inhale, warrior three. And check in with your alignment. Drop that left hip if it's lifting. And come into warrior one. And then flow between the two. You're ready to do it with one breath. Inhaling into warrior three. And exhale into warrior one. Inhale, warrior three. Exhale, or just keep it with one breath in between. And one more breath. 
If that, if the left toes are turning out to the side, helpful to turn the toes to the earth. Stay in warrior one. Take the hands behind your back. Interlacing the fingers, knuckles to sacrum or extending the arms and bowing forward. Humble warrior. Bowing to the earth for helping us to balance, to find where we can root down. Inhale back up, warrior one. And then exhale, hands down to the mat, step that right foot back, lower, bending the elbows, lower five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Good job. Arms alongside, turn one cheek to the mat and sigh it out. Big, big release into the mat. And then turn the opposite cheek to the mat. And again, and inhale deeply, big ah, out to the mat. And similar to yesterday, let's work our back bends today on our belly. So keep the arms right where they are. We're gonna do Shalabhasana, locust pose. So arms stay alongside, bring forehead to the mat. So we're gonna do this in three parts. We're gonna first lift the legs, and then we're gonna lift the upper body, and then we're gonna put it all together. So keep the forehead on the mat, tilt your pubic bone toward the mat, and on the next inhale, float the legs off the mat, keeping the upper body supported on the mat. Just focusing all your attention on the lower half of the body. Where can you find the strength to maybe lift the legs up just a little higher and really feel the lengthening out through your toes. So when we're in the full expression of this pose, we wanna feel lengthening. One more inhale, see if you can lift them up a little higher. <laughs> Lower them down, turn one cheek to the mat. Full breath in. Full breath out. So now when we do the upper body, we're keeping the lower half on the mat. So start, your arms are alongside your body. So think about your fingertips reaching toward the windows in the back. Bring your forehead to the mat. Lengthen down to the low back. Turn your pubic bone so your pelvis and your hips are pressing against the mat. And also press the tops of your feet into the mat to help glue the legs in place. And then inhale, lift the arms first. Fly them up. And then let them bring your upper body off the mat. Breathe in. Breathe out. See if you can lift one more set of ribs off the mat. Breathe in and exhale, lower down. Turn the opposite cheek to the mat. So now to put it all together, we want to just have the pelvis rooting, connecting with the earth. So we're going to lift our legs and our upper body. So next inhale, forehead to the mat. Start to lift your legs your arms and your upper body. If you feel clenching or gripping in the low back, turn the pubic bone toward the mat a little bit more. With each inhale and exhale, really think about just that lengthening out through your toes and out through the crown of the head. One more inhale. And then exhale, lower down, turn the opposite cheek to the mat, bend your knees, and slowly in, should wiper the legs from side to side. 
and then slide your hands underneath your shoulders to press yourself up, widen the knees, come back to a wide-legged child's pose, releasing the belly, the chest, the forehead toward the mat, sinking and noticing if there's more space that's been open through your practice today. Notice if there's anything that's shifting physically or mentally. Finding an equal breath here, inhale and exhale to the same count. The next inhale, slowly roll yourself up and then rock off onto one hip, swing the legs around in front of you. And we'll counter that back bend with a seated twist. So moving the flesh away from your sit bones. Sit up nice and tall. Flex your feet. Draw your right knee into your chest. And step it over the left leg. Right hand comes behind. Inhale, left arm up by the ear. Lift it to the right. Maybe extending this left arm, the left finger toward the mat, or maybe wrapping that left arm around the right knee. But feel balanced on your sit bones. Feel length in your spine on your inhale. Really imagining your thoracic spine here, the twisting action, helping to release anything that's clogged or locked. And then inhale, come back to center and release that right leg. And just shake out the legs a little bit, windshield wiper the feet, sit up nice and tall again. Draw that left knee to the chest, step it over the right. Left hand comes behind. Inhale the right arm up to find length and then move into your twist. And again, that right arm can wrap around that left knee so the knee's in the crook of the elbow. Or if that elbow is reaching the knee comfortably. And then this Scan the body here. So the only thing that really should be working is having the sits bones pressing into the earth. A little activity in the left foot, keeping the toe ball mounted. A little activity in the right and keeping it flexed. Try and press the back of the leg into the mat. And then the twist, but no tension in the face. Release tension in the brow, in the jaw, and in the neck. No work in the neck here. Breathe in, match the exhale with inhale. Next inhale, come back to center and release that leg. And then we're gonna come into forward fold. Hug your right knee into your chest again and drop that right knee out to the side. And keeping the left toes facing up, left knee, left toes facing up. Inhale the arms up, slight micro twist to the left. Reach up a little higher, get some length. Draw the belly in, lift your chest up to the sky. There you go, feel that lengthening. Now with that lengthening, hinge forward a little bit. But keep that lengthening. Dropping the hands down, but really feeling the lengthening as you hinge forward. You can always use a block if you want to support under your head like that. Or a block, both blocks on either side of the leg.
One more breath in. And out. Inhale to lift back up. Extend that right leg out in front. Draw left knee in. Let it drop out to the side. Right knee, right toes facing up. Keep that leg active. Actually try and press the right leg into the mat. As we inhale, arms up to thigh and length. Draw the belly in. Lift the chest up. Slight micro twist to the right. Then hinge forward again. Use blocks as you need to on either side of the leg. Or if you're hinging forward enough to then support the head with the block. Or if you need to support underneath that left knee with a block. Finding balance again with our breath. And inhale to lift up. And then bring that right sole of the foot to meet the left. Slide your feet out away from you a little bit. So you've got about a foot and a half in between your heels and your pubic bone. And then grab your hands, wrap them around the outside of your calves and lift up, lift the chest up. So pulling back to help lift the chest up and then on your exhale, take the elbows out to the side to pull you forward. Try and press the soles of the feet into one another. Soften the gaze or close the eyes and match your inhales with your exhales. A couple more breaths here. And then lift up, draw the heels in closer to you, wrapping your fingers around the feet. And then we're just going to butterfly the knees. Let's find some motion, keep lifting the heart up. There you go. Lift the heart up toward the sky. Draw the belly in. See if you can drive your sit bones toward the earth. And then hold. See if you can get the right knee toward the earth a little bit more. See if you can get the outside of your left knee toward the earth a little more. One more breath in. And out, bring those legs together. <laughs> Slowly lower onto your back. One vertebrae at a time. If you'd like, hug the knees into your chest. Rock a little bit from side to side, releasing the back into the mat. Setting up for Purpu Shavasana. So taking the feet to the mat, slide your left heel toward the left corner, far corner of your mat. Slide your right heel toward the right corner of your mat. Lift your hips up a little bit and then slide your tailbone under. Take the arms a little bit away from the body and then press into the arms to lift your chest and glide your shoulder blades under. And then rotate your palms to face the sky to help the shoulders roll back toward the earth. If there's any discomfort in the low back, you can slide blocks under the knees to help support you. 
Take a deep breath in through the nose. Ah, sigh it out through the mouth. In Sharon Gannon's teaching in her Magic 10 book about pranayama, prana is the life force. Yama means to restrict or control or regulate. Prana is not the breath, but can be accessed through breathing. Prana is not just present in the external air we breathe, but it is also the internal energetic animated force of life inside every cell of the body. The yogic texts all agree that to be able to consciously regulate the breath is to have control of one's thoughts And if you are in conscious control of your thoughts, you can regulate your life. So finding a balanced breath here, allowing it to become a rhythm that guides you into rest. Consciously suggest relaxation to every body part, starting with your toes and slowly moving upward by silently saying, toes relax, feet relax, legs relax, hips relax. Lower back, relax. Middle back, relax. Upper back, relax. Abdomen, relax. And chest, relax. Fingers relax, hands relax, arms relax. Shoulders relax, neck and throat relax. Relax. Lips and mouth. Relax. Tongue. Relax. Cheeks and nose. Relax. Relax, forehead, relax. Head and scalp, relax. Organs of digestion, relax. Organs of circulation, relax. Organs of respiration, relax. Organs of thinking, relax. Say silently to yourself, my whole body, inside and out, is completely relaxed.
feeling a connection with the earth here in court pose. Allowing it to support you fully so you can let go of all of the things that are holding. Start to deepen your breath, inviting small movements within your fingers and your toes. Circling wrists, circling ankles. Inhale the arms overhead, hug the knees into your chest. Rolling onto your right side, pausing there for a few breaths. Just recalling being a class today, balance. Balance requires as much mental equanimity as physical. And thinking about balancing in your poses, comparing it to running errands. Becoming one with your breath on and off your mat, slowly rolling the chest toward the earth, pressing into your left hand and then your right arm to circle yourself up. Coming up to a seat, keeping the eyes closed or soft, feeling the sits bones root down as you lengthen the spine. Inhale, circling the arms overhead, drawing the palms together and then down to your third eye, that space between your eyebrows. Recalling your intention that you set from the source of intuition. And then sealing our practice today with the sound of OM. Take an inhale and empty it out. light in me so you can honor the light in each of you. Thank you so much for a beautiful practice. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. The palace visit awesome. The what? The palace visit. We're going this week. Oh, this week. Yeah. We need to tell them about that. Mm -hmm. she, she's got it. Um, the campus tour at University of Tampa. Oh, and then she did University of Florida um, with my husband. Mm -hmm. And then she did an overnight at University of Miami with several friends she knew from high school. Oh, so just cover the Florida school. Oh my gosh. It's we'll see. Yeah, well, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Keep us oh, I know you guys are on this journey. Yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, Edie's, Edie's bounced after college, she went to Boston, and then she went down.